what's going on guys so i'm kind of jonesing because everything on youtube for the drone people have been all about the avada 2. now mind you i do not have hardly any fpv experience i bought the original fpv dji drone i returned it, it just didn't seem like something i could get into the picture quality was really bad cool drone the fly super fun super fast the avada came out didn't really jump I bought one and ended up returning that as well because I just couldn't necessarily get into it. So the goggle thing and the whole FPV experience is a totally different trip than traditional camera drones. Our Mini 3 Pros, Mini 4 Pros, Mavic 3, Mavic 3 Pro, Inspire, whatever it may be, totally different than flying one of these guys. So I figured I was going to go do a video outside today, but it was super windy and cold, like 40 mile an hour gusts. I did fly this, get some footage, and I will put that in the intro just to show a little bit that it was kind of capable, more capable than probably I am right now. But mind you, that was two times flying this thing. So I want to just talk story, as we would say in Hawaii, about a few things that I want to know or I wanted to know, and I couldn't really figure out. I watched, like, what was his name? Joshua, the FPV guy. I watched a bunch of different Aldrin video from Flight Path and Drone Supremacy and a lot of people that I admire and I think are good YouTubers in far, as far as the drone community is concerned. But everyone kind of has their own take on it. Now, completely clueless, but into drones for over eight years now, this... I just don't know much about. So I got the fly more combo. So this is the Avada 2, the drone itself. And I'll show you what comes in the combo. So we got that. We got three batteries. We got this nice little hub. So they click into here. Boom. It has a power out so you could actually charge something through this for the, the USB-C. But regardless, we get three batteries. One's in the drone right now. Nice little better sound than the Avada 1 I know. You also have the area right here where you could connect the drone and it has 46 gigabytes of internal storage, which is pretty stellar because sometimes you do forget your dumb memory cards, even though I have about 500 of them. <laughs> so this little port right here, boom, micro SD card, I got a 128 in there. They're super cheap. So no reason to not have one in there, in the goggles and everywhere in your car, in your glove compartment, in your camera bags, but I digress. So we have three batteries with the hub. Very cool. It comes with this little guy, the motion controller two, which I kind of thought was a joke. I would joke around, say the DJI dildo and just kind of stupid little thing. But I have realized that I actually really love this thing and it's pretty fun and I have better control and even like isn't it Joshua the guy who does the FPV stuff I think it is Boardwell or so, I don't know anyway sorry about that if I'm pronouncing your name I've been watching your videos on learning how to fly FPV with my liftoff simulator so been really helpful but regardless even he was talking about this and when you fly with it it actually is controlling the gimbal so the gimbal's going up and down as you're climbing, descending, and it just does a really cool job with managing all that without having the fuss with the gimbal on. Something that doesn't come in the Fly More Combo, whoop, the Remote 3. So I haven't, I've flown with this, and of course it's kind of traditional, but I haven't gone in the manual mode. I haven't adjusted this. You gotta take off this little cover. And I haven't really found a lot of people, I just saw a video today, talking about getting the Avada 2 in the manual mode and flying. So you have to take this piece and peel it back, adjust the little Allen screws to release the tension so this does not spring back. So regardless, this is the remote controller three, built-in antenna, pretty standard remote, but I honestly think this is way more fun to fly with, but I haven't flown manual mode. You can't fly manual mode with this. It has the easy acro mode, which I think is kind of lame. I couldn't even figure that out today, <laughs> but it was super windy and I didn't feel like messing around. But you can't get the easy acro mode with the remote three, but you can do it with the controller. 
So it gets kind of confusing, but you can only fly manual mode and unlock it with this controller, not with this. So there's a lot of stuff to kind of figure out. I've watched a ton of videos from everyone. And yeah, we got the gimbal cover for the Avada 2. We have the Goggles 3. So the Goggles 3 actually are really comfortable. There's no battery pack dangling from you, as people have talked about, of course, by now. The little antennas pop up. There's two little cameras, which are kind of useless. It has a really narrow field of view, and it's super dizzying. This is dizzying to me, someone who isn't in the FPV, kind of like nauseating. So between that experience and then trying to tap, you have to firmly tap twice over here where the LEDs are, and it will throw you into these two cameras, which is literally like a little field of view, and you can change from 2D to 3D. 3D is even more nauseating. <laughs> so this whole experience is totally different and kind of not really relaxing. It's fun, but more anxiety inducing than say just going out and cruising with a Mavic 3 or a drone style that I'm super familiar with. So we have the Goggles 3, which to me, I'm not gonna get into all of this right now because it isn't about that. I didn't really wanna get into it all with this video. Like I did if I did it outside, I was gonna kinda be way more thorough and talk about everything. I just kinda wanted to give my little take about certain things. So the Goggles 3, totally a different experience. You're supposed to have a visual observer or visual line of sight on the drone to be legal by the FAA. And it's really hard to do that with this. And I flew in the city a little bit, just quickly right by the lakefront. You're kind of wondering if you're going to get jumped or something. You got these things on, you can't see, even with the camera thing. That's pretty useless. It's really intended, I think, just to get a little quick sight of your drone when you're maybe trying to hand land it or land it or do something. But again, just a whole different experience and a lot to get used to. So what can we talk about? Let me see, hold on, what else is there? Anything else in the Fly More kit? Just spare props, this bag, which is actually pretty decent. And that's about it. This was another $200. I think it will be worth it just to be able to fly in manual mode. I'm still indecisive whether I wanna commit to this. So as a regular drone pilot, which I feel pretty competent at and decent at, it's a totally different experience and a different type of flying. So like some people have said, it's like learning how to do traditional dance or learning how to like do hip hop break dancing or something. So it's a totally different style, totally different thing. You gotta see things differently. You wanna fly this low to the ground. You wanna cruise close to objects so you get that proximity effect. But at the same time, I don't really love flying fast. It's fun, but as far as footage is concerned, I like slower cinematic footage. That's just my vibe. So right or wrong, I think the thing that I could get into is utilizing this for maybe flying indoors, which I kind of touched on a little bit just personally right now. I flew through the house, but the thing is, there's no obstacle avoidance sensors on this, so I didn't even know about that. There's visual positioning sensors on the back and on the bottom, so it's not gonna not run into an object. If I fly and I'm cruising at my head, guess what, it's gonna hit me. So this will just basically keeps it more positioned when you're flying through things, which is helpful, but it's not gonna prevent you from crashing. So what I found out, it did seem to go really smoothly inside, but the thing is, it's hard to say fly backwards. And I was using this remote. I think this is the better remote personally for that, but maybe not. I haven't really played with this inside yet. I kind of dismissed it thinking it was kind of a joke. And actually it's super intuitive and really a lot of fun and cruising through barns and just little stuff, like even chasing the train, even though it was super windy and I kind of suck at it because I'm not wanting to crash way the hell out there. It was a lot <laughs> to kind of even get across the field in the winds, but it's fun and it's pretty intuitive. Actually, it's super intuitive. And I would like to try this and I will try this when I do my next video in manual mode and I'll take you guys along the ride for the first time, even though I'm gonna suck at it, but at least I feel pretty confident. And I know you can hit, I think, ugh, I think it's the pause button here. 
So I think I'll have to make sure about that. But if you're having any kind of difficulty, I think you could either hit the pause button or toggle this into a normal or sport mode. So you got to go into custom settings and make sure you t enable the manual setting for this. So there's just a lot to this. And once you kind of get familiarized with it, it doesn't seem so bad, but it's a different setup. It's a different trip. When you want to fly, you feel like you're kind of doing a little bit more. You're got goggles involved, you got this or that, another remote involved, you got the drone. It just feels that much more. And it kind of isn't personally as relaxing as it would be flying, as I said, a Mavic 3 Pro for my example, or an Autel Evo 2 Pro or any kind of camera drone, Air 3, whatever it may be. There's a lot of things that I just don't know about. And it seems like everyone kind of touches on things a little bit differently and for someone who's totally brand new to this like what i want to know is there's no obstacle avoidance okay so be careful you can crash this very easily we're used to obstacle avoidance we're used to having it stop in front of an object possibly if we have it enabled but this won't do that so there's that goggles totally a new experience kind of nauseating <sighs> not really something that i feel amazing about it's very cool you know, it's a cool experience. You're looking through a really amazing high definition kind of thing and you feel as if you're the drone cruising around, but it's a different thing and it takes a lot to get used to. What else is there? A lot of things that are helpful is making sure you know some of the settings. So I feel I'm kind of competent or confident with things like making sure my camera settings are correct. So like drone supremacy, I believe had a video and he was talking about making sure you're shooting in you know, D log, whatever it is, M or whatever, I don't know what it is exactly, but shooting in D log, not shooting in normal color space, but even in normal color, you can change the sharpness and stuff. But I didn't even mess with that. I went to the D log M, I believe it's called, and shot at 4K 60 and all manual mode. And that actually did a pretty darn good job. And I was kind of impressed with the footage. And you can get cinematic footage if you don't fly this thing as crazy. And if you're flying it fast, you can still slow it down 50% because you're shooting in 4K 60. So that's my little thing I've realized as a total newbie. Make sure you're shooting fully manual. It does not come with neutral density filters. They're on back order. I ordered some from Adorama. Hopefully they'll come in soon, but I know some people were talking about it being part of the Fly More kit. It is not part of the Fly More kit. And in order to get the nice motion blur and nice footage, you do want ND filters on, probably an ND32 or an ND16 at the bare minimum if it's a sunny day to keep your shutter speed at 1 20th of a second if you are shooting 4K60. So buy the filters, they're $79, but they're all out of stock. So Right now I'm shooting at super high shutter speeds and not ideal. So part of the learning curve, but it would have been nice if they would have thrown those in. This whole thing, I believe with a two year refresh, which I'd suggest you guys buy, if you're gonna buy a drone like this that you know you're gonna crash, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I felt like that 500 times today, <laughs> flying super low to the grass and going through the barn and just really nerve wracking, honestly. So. It's fun, but it's definitely not probably my main thing. I just think it's more novelty for me personally, even though I know it's really cool. And if you're really good at it and you have the patience to learn, I'm sure it would be a great thing to incorporate into even a normal edit with a traditional camera drone. Yeah, having camera settings in manual, shooting in D-Log M, um, having neutral density filters on your drone, all key, this do not dismiss. It's actually a lot of fun. When you're doing quick transfer mode, for example, if you're wanting to get the footage onto your iPhone, like this little guy, which I do a lot, and I'll throw an edit together really quickly on my phone in LumaFusion or something, and I could actually add a LUT in LumaFusion, and I could do a video on that. If you guys want, let me know in the comments below. But you do not have to have this powered on, which I thought you did. All you need to do is open the Fly app, have the goggles powered on and have the drone powered on. Switch in the quick transfer mode and that's that. And you can transfer your footage. You could also do it through the USB-C port over here. But there's so much to talk about with this, especially someone new to this like I am, that it's super overwhelming. I mean, there's camera settings, there's 
different field of views. There's rock steady, there's horizon steady, there's turning it off and adding stabilization in something like gyro flow and post. I haven't messed around with that. I think I have gyro flow on my iPad Pro, but I've never even utilized it or used it. But I know rock steady is better for the traditional drone flying, like FPV kind of thing for outdoors. Horizon Steady, I think, would be better for indoors, as some people have talked about in their videos. So that's kind of a thing. If you're not sure, use Rock Steady outside, use Horizon Steady inside, and certain modes are only going to be compatible with wide or wide angle or normal, whatever field of view. So you got to figure all that out. Um, this thing you got to figure out as well. So like just to power this on, let's see, we would power on the goggles, right? So it's on the bottom. So these guys are powered on now. The batteries in here, it seems like it takes a long time for these to charge. So now you have more devices and more things to keep and tr keep track of that are charged. I know DJI just came out with their battery pack, but whatever. I got one from Amazon for like 110 bucks and it pretty much rocks and does exactly what you would need. I can put a link below for that as well. It helps if you support the channel by using those little things. I don't get much with my affiliate because I don't really rock that stuff too much. But at the very least, if you're into drones and you want to learn a little bit more, I try to do as much as I can, but I care for my mom who's older with dementia and I'm limited with time. But hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, comment if you'd like, it would be helpful. And let's just see what it takes to get this thing launched, okay? I got a little bamboo here. So we're gonna double press the back button. Boom. Gonna power on. And then we're gonna double press this guy and power this on. So now we have all three things powered on. We have this remote, and when you pair this and you repair that, you pair this, pair that, <laughs> a pair, blah, blah, blah. So when you pair this and you also pair this remote controller three, you don't have to pair them each time. They both stay paired. So whatever one you're using, it will connect to, so that's at least a good thing. So here, I'll take my hat off. I will put these guys on. And it says right now, now mind you, these are pretty comfortable and I dig them. So at least they're comfortable and I could see what's going on. There's a little button right here. I'm gonna okay out of it. It says multiple geo zones nearby, flight restrictions in effect. I'm not gonna worry about that. All I'm gonna do is show you this little drone and what you need to do. So something as simple as taking off, you double press this orange button so, boom, double press it again for the props to stop. Double press, start, double press, stop. And if you want to launch or land, you hold this after the props are going. So we're going to double press, and then I'm going to hold and depress the orange button. And now, it almost hit the fan, so you didn't see that, which is good. I could use this little joystick to kind of control it, but I just want to land it. And I'm going to hold the orange button again, keep my hand still, come on. There we go. So to me, even though this is kind of intuitive, there's still things when I'm using it that I am not positive about. <laughs> and I'm trying to control it or move it, and it just doesn't seem to want to behave the exact way that I think it should, or intuitively wise it should, but it's not. So there's still a learning curve with this, and I still haven't nailed it, and there's that. So this little joystick can yaw the drone and raise and lower it, but sometimes it doesn't seem like it wants to do that. This little thing, it will go through a tutorial. You can double press it and it will take the goggles. Now I can see the camera 
And like someone was saying, I think Joshua was saying this, that's literally the field of view. So I can't see my hands. I can see my hands, just the edges of them. So literally that's what this is seeing. So yeah, not very much. So I could see the camera. I could see the drone, like full frame, nauseating. And I could also double tap this. And now it will go back into the normal field of view, meaning seeing the goggle view. So really comfortable, but really weird to wear. It's a whole different thing. You just, you know, kind of look weird to me. <laughs> it's, it's just a whole different trip. But yeah, pretty cool. I mean, a lot to learn. And I know this definitely... You can set it up if you're left-handed or right-handed, and I think it does behave differently. Like I tried it accidentally in my right hand, even though I set it up for the left hand, and things were totally not working the same way. So <sighs> just stay tuned. I'm gonna do a video that's gonna be much more thorough, much more planned out and outside and show you with the goggle view. I'll record and put a micro SD card in here. But yeah. It takes a lot of commitment, I think, to get comfortable with this and play with it. And it was pretty windy today, roughly 30 plus mile an hour gusts. And it was just banking and having a hard time even landing. <laughs> so it took a lot to get to that train in sport mode for my example today. And it wasn't ideal, but it did go through the barn like I was trying and it handled and it was kind of surprising, but definitely not ideal conditions. We've had really windy days lately and it's kind of stunk. So hopefully we get some proper spring weather soon. I am gonna go to Hawaii probably within the next couple of weeks or probably two weeks. So I'm gonna bring this with and I'm gonna to try to rock out some footage there and put this thing through its paces and hopefully it doesn't end up in the ocean. But that's the thing. It's kind of nerve wracking because everything you do with this is high risk. So it is kind of a high anxiety drone, even though it's fun. You're kind of just waiting for it to crash. And as I said, if you're gonna buy this, definitely buy two year refresh on it because you want that peace of mind and coverage. I personally insure my drones with State Farm as well. So this is insured with that, my Mavic 3 Pro, my Mavic, my Autel stuff, blah, blah, blah. Everything's covered under a policy with State Farm and it costs me like $10 a month for like seven grand in coverage. So I have that peace of mind and I have DGI refresh as well. So with that being said, it's a fun thing. It's definitely hands down the easiest way to experience FPV and to get in the FPV for the first time and give it a go. So for roughly 1600 bucks, if you are able to invest in that, it's fun. I mean, personally, I want to dive something and be able to do some cool stuff like that. But at the same time, I don't know if I care that much because it does seem kind of more about just flying with FPV. I know there's some amazing footage and I don't know who it was. I think Drone Supremacy had some really beautiful cinematic footage where he was flying through these like, I mean, it's just nuts. <laughs> You know, I don't know. I mean, if you lose your drone in that scenario, you're dead. I mean, there's no way to recover it. So it's a big level of commitment. I'm sure they send some of these guys the drones and that's par for the course. But when it's your own 15, 1600 bucks, I'm not sure if DJI's flyaway coverage would take care of it. I know State Farm, for my example, would take care of it. So there is that, but you don't want to be having insurance claims and all that kind of stuff. It just adds to the stress in life and the stress in flying drones. So I'm hoping this sheds some light. Now, mind you, again, this is someone who is totally new to FPV. I have some experience with owning the DJI FPV, whatever that is worth, and the Avada for a short period of time before I returned it, and probably 50 hours on the simulator with liftoff. And that's fun, but I would never say that I'm amazing at it, even with that much time. So there's a lot of commitment to this, a lot of time, I'm sure, in order to fly this thing worth the you-know-what. But you can cruise around and get some footage and fly low to the ground and do some fun stuff. I'm waiting for the weather to kind of get nicer. Maybe in Hawaii, do some stuff, fly really close to the beach. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I got 30 days to decide. I did buy this with my own money from B&H. So <sighs> that's it, guys. 
subscribe and stay tuned. I will do a proper video with this soon outside when it's a little bit warmer and show you me going into manual mode for the first time and how that is and what's needed. I think it's pretty simple. As I said, you just got to remove this and make sure the tension is out of this left stick. And that's pretty much it. And then change a setting in the menu, allowing this to be manual mode, not sport mode twice. So we shall see. Stay tuned. Aloha. Peace, guys. Bye.